In case you're wondering what these are, these are the stock of our Fuji cherry. Prunus incisa, Kojo no Mai. And this is what we make our Fuji cherry bonsai from. So I'm going to show you what we will do with some of these. We've got about four or 500 of these. We keep them and grow them old. And when they get thick enough trunks, we then make into bonsai. We don't always show a lot of our stock because uh, this is part of the uh, stock that we keep growing and using, but we don't rush to sell these because we know what we can do with them. So I'll just pick one of these and I will show you what we can do with this. The other plant that we have here are these Japanese quince. This is Kynomalies and this is a lovely scented white uh, version. Look at the beautiful flowers. They're almost like cherry blossom, but they're not. So again, we've got about 200 of these. And as with a lot of these plants, we just grow them till they have a nice trunk and then we'll make individual bonsai with them. So this is going to be another YouTube exercise. So we are a large nursery, so this is the stock that we hold. We also have Forsythia coming on. These are three-year-old cuttings and they're going to be cut back. The prunings will be made into further bonsai as cuttings and this is how we keep propagating them. You will have seen this picture of the Fuji cherry in quite a few of my Facebook uh, postings but this tree you won't believe has been in flower for the last four to five weeks and it is still in bloom such a long flowering period and it is one of our favorites it's a really large tree the pot is every bit I would say 18 inches long and it's a big tree we've got other ones as well and they're all made on the nursery from ordinary stock plants. So I'm going to show you what we do to create these. So this is my attempt at self-videoing because I'm keeping a distance from people. So really, this is just a pruning exercise. By the way, the Fuji cherry can be struck from cuttings very, very easily. And this is how most of these are propagated. You can even use these hardwood cuttings and just dip it in hormone rooting powder or liquid and then stick it in soil and you will get a lovely plant. So all I'm doing is pruning it back to a shape and there you are, you've got a lovely tree shape there. <clears throat> I'm not going to bother about cuttings because we've got hundreds of these but you can see how well they're grown and we will now reduce the root ball spring is a very good time to do all this what you mustn't do is do radical root pruning like this in the middle of summer lovely radial roots and all we need is to put it in a suitable bonsai pot which I will find for you most of these nursery trees are grown in this organic compost which is usually either a peat substitute or peat and bark and they seem to grow very well in this. These trees I would say are about eight years old from cutting. Of course if you grow it in a large pot with a lot of soil it will thicken much faster and some of these thick roots here I know it make the tree grow strong but I don't think I need that, so we can either put it in a very basic round bonsai pot
like so. I'm not going to tie it in. I can tie it in if you want. I can put the same soil back. It's quite amazing what a bonsai pot can do to a simple shrub. Just putting it in a bonsai pot makes it look like a bonsai. I've made it slightly leaning that way. So it's quite different from what it started off life. Uh, so we can make literally hundreds of these. We can make one of these one every three minutes. There you go. We've pruned it hard. We've sacrificed all those flowers. But no matter, next year we'll get all these lovely flowers and I'm going to take these flowers and arrange them in the house. I'd usually decorate the toilets and the living room with these little flowers. So there you go. Fuji cherry, so easy to make. So this is what we've pruned off. All these lovely flowers we've pruned it off. And that's the Fuji cherry bonsai that we've created. I could have put it in a bigger bonsai pot to make the plant grow stronger but in this pot this seems okay and this tree next year when it comes into flower will become very saleable and during the summer I will keep pruning the new shoots back to about two or three buds and that's how I will create the flowering shoots because the flowers are born on the shoots that are created in the previous summer. That means the shoots of this summer will bear the flowers for next spring. So hopefully we will have flowers like this next spring on that tree. So I've done a self videoing exercise and I hope it didn't detract from the quality of this video. So today is the 6th of May and I'm self-videoing because of this lockdown and I'm going to talk about how you deal with the uh, Prunus incisa or Fuji cherry after it's finished flowering. When the tree is in flower it's absolutely spectacular. We will show you some shots of this. This is one of our favorite trees and it really looks like a mighty old natural cherry tree. The leaves are small, the flowers are small. Many people hanker after cherry bonsai because the cherry blossom is an iconic tree of Japan. They always associate Japan with the cherry blossom. But the real cherry blossom, the flowers are about one or two inches in diameter. And when you try to make bonsai with them, they don't really lend themselves to the scale of the tree that you create as a bonsai. And the Fuji cherry is ideal in that respect because the flowers are small and the leaves are small and they flower quite early in the year. I've had some Fuji cherry that flower from as early as I would say January onwards and they have a long flowering season, sometimes lasting four to six weeks. Now this tree has finished flowering, so I haven't been pruning it for the last two or three years and it's time I did something to it. So to coin the proverbial Peter Chan phrase, we've got to bite the bullet. If you don't prune the tree, it will get completely out of hand. I will just show you another tree which has become so tall and lanky that it's gone completely out of hand. So this tree, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a lovely big tree and in nature, the tree with this sort of canopy would have a trunk this size. It's just that in bonsai, we tend to emphasize the trunk so much that we've got to scale the tree uh, in keeping with the bonsai you make. So what you see in nature and what the image you get as bonsai are two quite different things. Maybe I should start with the simple one so that I can show you uh, how hard you need to prune with it. So let me get this out of the way not to confuse you and I will work on the simple one first now with this tree because it was covered in blossom I didn't have the heart to cut it back the tree should really be about this size so I have an 
image in my mind that the tree should be like this. This side, not that high. So I just go around and cut it into a dome or beehive shape because that is the shape most bonsai should look like. If you're not sure of how much to cut, why don't you start by cutting little bits at a time, have a look at it, and then go further back. But because I am quite a daring guy, I also have a vision as to how hard I need to cut to get the shape I want. I will do more or less what I feel is right. I can always adjust it, but the thing is not to go to extremes. So by not going to extremes, I mean, I'm not going to cut it down to the stump here. That would be silly. You know, even cutting here would be a bit hard. So I have just done a very moderate cut. So if you can imagine what the tree was like before I cut, I think you will agree that this is more in keeping with the size of the trunk that I have here. This being in a square pot, you can look at it from different sides. Ingrowing branches we tend to get rid of. So it's got a rounded shape. So that's the shape you need to cut. I think that would be sufficient for this tree. Don't cut more than that. You can get carried away and keep cutting and you end up with nothing, so be careful. So no special bonsai tools, just by secateurs. You will find that cherries do get slight dieback. That's in the nature of the tree, especially the thin twigs tend to die back and the twigs growing on the inside tend to die back for lack of light. You've heard me say that many a time. And that is the shape I think would be complete. So comparing what the tree was before, this is the shape I would prune to. So I've done that one. Now let's go on to the big one. Now here we have the big one. This one again, this is really like a spreading natural looking tree. So I'm going to start by cutting off like two or three inches all around the perimeter of the tree. Don't worry about it branching because the more you cut, the better the density will become. So it is like any deciduous tree, creating ramification, I don't like using that word, it's just making it more twiggy. You just keep cutting the ends and it will break into more shoots. So you double or quadruple the number of shoots every time you do this. So the logic of what I'm doing really is that if I didn't do anything to the tree, if each year it starts producing four inches, where do you end? It'll become four inches here, next it'll be eight inches, so the tree will become that big. So you have to, at some stage, as I say, bite the bullet and give it a hard prune. Of course, you only prune hard if the tree is healthy. If a tree, for any reason, is not healthy, you should make sure that the tree is healthy before it is given a hard prune. So this applies to all trees, all deciduous trees in particular. 
like a maple for instance don't pull too hard if the tree is not strong like leaf pruning many people are very fond of doing leaf pruning so if you leaf prune a sickly maple you might kill it completely so do be careful so pruning and leaf pruning are very similar in that respect and because we are in late spring may we regard as late spring there is still a lot of chance for this tree to grow and in fact no sooner that I have cut this I would say in the next two to three weeks I will get a lot of new shoots I will return to this tree and show you the progress of this tree during the year I think I should do more of it because many of you think that what I do is just the end of the story and I don't show the after effects the trouble is there's so much to show that I soon run out of uh, video time so I pruned quite a bit here and I think I'll leave it like that I don't want to go too mad I've done quite a bit so this is what I feel is adequate to take care of this tree. Still has a very natural shape. Cherry trees do go in the shape. So I will keep it like that. What I want to do next is to show you how we make one of these from scratch. So let me put this tree aside. And I will show you how we make one of these bonsai from scratch. So here I have my turntable and these are typical Fuji cherries that we sell as partly trained trees. They are already partly trained. And if you can imagine, all I need to do is put it in a bonsai pot. So if you can imagine that tree in this pot, like so, it will be a complete bonsai. Now let me start with the simple one. Now these have been trimmed already quite hard, so the shape is there. They do take time to thicken in the trunk, so this again has a very natural shape. And this one, if you turn around, you've got to select the front that looks most natural, and I think this is a lovely front like that. So let's take it out of the pot and take some of the soil away. If you tease around the soil surface, you will find that there is more trunk underneath. Many people are a bit aghast when they see me working on trees throughout the year. They think that because I'm working on trees throughout the year, some of them might die. I'm not like some of these demonstrators at bonsai conventions and shows. They work on the tree, they take so much root off and the tree dies as a result. No one ever knows what happens to the tree afterwards. But I can show you that none of my trees die. I know how much root to take off. So if you can see what I'm doing, there is no sleight of hand, no magic. The root ball is still intact. I'm just teasing enough so that it fits the pot. I think if I were to cut a third of the root or even half the root away at this time of the year, which is May, May is not in hot summer. If you did it in July and August, it might be dangerous, but certainly doing it in May is not dangerous at all. So I will just tease enough. Put it at the right or correct position 
In fact, because this is the same soil that has come out, I can put the same soil back, tie the tree into the pot, and then I have <coughs> a ready-made bonsai. There you are. There you go. So that's the start of a very nice Fuji cherry here. You can prune it a little more if you want to do, go the whole hog, but I think the proportions are quite nice as it is. So this, when it produces flowers, will look like a real tree. Not all these trees have a single trunk. I just got another one out, and if I look at this one, it's got several trunks. So when you get a situation like this, although it's got several trunks from the base, I think it's got one single trunk right at the very bottom. So it's still a single trunk tree. Lovely thick trunk there. These trees are quite old. I would say they are at least 10 to 12 years old from cutting. It's just that they're grown quite strongly. So there you are. The trunk is quite thick. That trunk is coming off that side. Let me just see if I can cut that ugly root off. I may not because it may be a bit dangerous at this time of the year. But because there are too many twigs coming out from the central portion, I will just remove some of them so that it doesn't look so congested. So I just removed two. So that it becomes like a triple trunk tree. Looking at this from the front. So looking at it from either side looks nice. And all I have to do is put it in a similar type of bonsai pot. I'm just loosening the soil, teasing the roots a little bit. I will try not to cut root if I can help it. A lot of it is common sense. You can judge how much root to cut without the tree suffering too much. <clears throat> You're putting it in a pot, putting it at the correct angle is very important. I think that would be the correct front. The rest is just filling the soil to top it up. Very often with trees like this, you get trees that look like a multi-trunk, but they are in fact several cuttings put together so you can split it and get more than one tree out of it. But this one has got a nice triple trunk. So that's very nice looking. So how nice is that? So that's all you do. This is how we create the Fuji cherry from nursery plants. So I hope you've learned something. And I think something is added to the front of this video as well. So you will have had quite a lot of learning material from this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.